In this video, we're going to talk about BMW and specifically their entire SUV lineup. I'm going to walk you through from the BMW X1 to the iX and the XM concept, which is soon to go into production. I'm going to let you know what I think about each of these models, because in the lineup, there are some really cool and pretty beautiful automotive designs. And there are also a bunch of uh, designs that I don't feel is in line with what we've seen from BMW over the years. So let's start right here with the BMW X1. There is a lot to talk about, so let's just jump straight in. And in honor of today's BMW video, I'm wearing my white E30 M3 t-shirt, which you can go and get at the Sketch monkey.com we also added a bunch of uh, hoodies because winter is coming soon so go check that out at the sketch monkey.com so up here we have the brand new look at this this is a brand new x1 and i'm a huge fan of this design this is not a facelift this is actually a new car from bmw and it kind of gives me hope that bmw still <laughs> knows how to design cool looking cars and beautiful cars we have a nice li uh, shoulder line right here beautiful traditional bmw BMW lines in this car and the graphics in the front end there's nothing weird or nothing too out there art or artistic about this design that they're trying to do with a bunch of other SUVs which I'm gonna show you in just a minute this looks really good in my opinion I think it's uh, it's a solid design it looks very it looks like a unit and I like the uh, the graphics in the front end they work well together we have this nice chamfer here as you can see this is a little messy to me i think the lower parts of pretty much every single bmw these days look too messy i want to go back to a time mid 2000s uh the, the e46 is the best looking three series in my opinion simplify the lower part of the front end if we can do that with this top front i think we have a winning concept in the rear, I do like these taillights as well. They look really clean and simple as well. And they have a nice identity to them. Almost looks like we have a light bar here, but I'm not sure this lights up. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. But we have the same kind of graphics, as you can see right here, coming back in the rear end as well, in the rear diffuser. It still looks a little messy with all the different colors and angles and things that don't connect to anything if you look at this x1 kind of the top part looks like a, a car design while the lower half looks more like a product design it lacks that emotion and dynamic lines that i want to see in specifically a bmw so moving forward to the bmw x2 so this is sort of the coupe version of the x1 and i think still this one looks pretty good we have this front wheel drive proportions of this car meaning that the hood sits pretty high up in order to make it a, a front wheel drive layout but it still has a pretty cool design to it we have these grills now being almost upside down with this long line right here you can see that it looks very different from the x1 i do prefer the x1's grill treatment here these look very stately specifically for a small uh, suv like the x1 is the smallest in the lineup these look a little more sporty they're more squished as you can see but but I do prefer the lower part right here. Not a huge fan of this triangular designs that they're adding into pretty much a, a lot of new BMWs these days. The new 2 Series has this treatment as well. It doesn't connect to anything. I think this is BMW trying to add some artiste touches to the to the designs but it's still a pretty decent looking design also in the rear we have a pretty normal looking diffuser and we also have a pretty decent line flow in this design we have this line right here we have this nice shoulder going into the corner of the taillight and then we have some black plastic cladding at the lower part to make it feel like an off-roader because adding black pla plastic cladding on cars specifically here in the u.s that's what's gonna sell the car if you were selling this Without the black plastic in, in the US, people would think it's a small hatch and they would simply not buy it. It's, 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 it's science. So here we have the BMW X3. One of my favorite designs specifically from the front end. I love the treatment here. We have this nice chamfer. You can see that the grill sits inside of this chamfer. So it has a sort of a, a housing for the grills, which looks really cool. I do like these headlights. They look a little organic, maybe too organic in combination with this very um, sharp uh, grill patterns or outlines of the grill and then we have a different solution to the triangular treatment that we have in the x2 in the x3 it kind of looks a little more uh, designed and not just the 
sharp angle like this triangle in the corner we now have some more design features into this kind of looks uh, maybe a little too messy still in my opinion with all these angles and lines that go all over the car and looking at the rear view this is where bmw went off the path that i think they should stay on i love the previous generation x3 i think that's a the rear end of it i think that's a really good looking design this though this looks very uninspired and very undynamic it looks super static and it feels like this design element just doesn't suit the rear end of this car at all the proportions are still very similar to the pre-facelifted x3 i do love this lower part this is what i want to see from bmw more simplistic design a nice diffuser with the twin tail pipes like this but then they they kind of experiment a lot with the graphic design of their cars they also do that a lot in the new ix and the xm as well which we're going to have a look at in just a second i did make a quick redesign of this adding some more uh, thickness to this led which has sort of the same thickness all around creating this undynamic feeling static feeling that doesn't in my opinion suit the rest of the flow in this gorgeous the gorgeous proportions of the x3 kind of ruins it a little bit now moving in to the x4 and if you've watched my videos before you know that i'm not a fan of uh, suv coupes i just don't understand why they exist at all if you want a coupe you buy a coupe that sits lower to the ground if you want an suv you buy an suv with a proper looking uh, rear end to uh, add the functionality of an suv because this doesn't have the driving capabilities or the driving characteristics of a lower sitting four door coupe or a two-door coupe and it doesn't have the practicality of a suv either so it, it tries to be good at two things and becomes great at absolutely nothing but i'm wrong when it comes to uh, suv coupes i know that because people are buying these things like crazy i have no idea why they don't look good at all and i think this just looks like it's been smushed something has just stepped on the rear end and just smushed the rear end and it looks unnatural and the proportions are just way off i'm gonna leave it at that with the x4 and move on to something a lot more beautiful and that is the current x5 i'm a huge fan of this design we have a simplistic styling in the lower part the x5 right now i think is in in, in combination with the with the x1 i think the x1 and the x5 are the best looking suvs from bmw at the moment the the graphics are just spot on we have some organic features in the headlights but it also has some sharpness right here for example and this line very sharp line as well works perfectly with this sharper grill that we have i would have it in shadow line i think it's not called shadow line that's audi but you know what i mean de-chrome this thing have it in black everything that's chrome on this car i want to have it in black but looking at the lower lower part of this uh, bumper very simplistic design kind of reminiscent of the uh, mid-2000s graphics updated in a modern version and it still works because those cars today look almost timeless in their designs and i definitely prefer the first generation x5 i think that is a gorgeous machine even though it kind of looks like they just took a 5 series and raised it up but they made it work really well in my opinion and the rear of this x5 as well we have a nice interesting looking shoulder line going in here into the corner as you can see right there we have this line in the bottom creating some nice flow in this design we have a subtle subtle chamfer housing or base uh, sort of as a base for the rear uh, tail lights right here as you can see clean design dynamic features we have more of a thickness in this piece that kind of fades into a uh, thinner piece of led and that's what i mean when i talk about the dynamics and graphics if you don't uh, really understand what what i'm talking about looking at the x5 here comparing it to the x3 no dynamic right here in the x3 a lot of dynamic in the x5 because we have different thicknesses and it looks like the graphic uh, features actually has some movement in them and that's what i want to see then moving on to the x6 so same thing here with the x4 i don't understand why it exists i think these type of cars that just exist to uh infuse some cash flow into the companies companies know that people will buy these 
uh, <laughs> these SUV uh, coupes, just like they buy the X4. A lot of people are also buying the X6. I do think the X6 with the bigger proportions and the bigger size overall, it works a little better than the X4, but not by much. It's still not an attractive design and something that I would personally never consider buying at all. And now moving on to the facelifted X7. Some of you, when I made a video on this, you didn't like the, the front end treatment of this design. As you can see, we now have these bumper lights. So the headlights sit right here, just like we're gonna have in the upcoming production version of the XM. And then we have the daytime running lights up here. I'm glad that they facelifted this because 50% of all the previous pre-facelifted X7 that I've seen, they have one of these LEDs not working. I don't know if you noticed that, but every time I see an X7, and I'm not joking, it's if I feel like it's 50% of the time, one of these LEDs is not working in those cars. So I'm glad that they facelifted it. And I think this looks pretty good, actually. It's, it's not too bad. We do have some mess going on right here in the lower part, but I do kind of like that we have the, uh, the top part of the headlights, the front end, being the very, uh, where they can hammer in the identity of the brand by using LEDs and then the functionality of the headlights sits lower and kind of hidden and uh, you can see that it's smoked out the the glass that sits in front of it kind of hide it more and make this be the pronounced uh, light lighting when you see it coming behind you I think that's a really cool idea we have a nice grill here I, I'm not opposed to the size of this specific grill it's big but I still think it fits the X7's proportions. It has some nice line flow. As you know, this is the biggest SUV they have on sale at the moment, which means we gotta be a little bit more restrained with the styling. We can't have too much fun and go crazy with the lines here like we can in the X1 and the X2, for example. But it still has a very nice line flow and it suits this package overall. You can see just how restrained this section is in the lower part of the diffuser, for example. And these taillights, they look pretty good. Not as dynamic as the X5, but still look uh, like it suits the bigger brother of the X5 with these more horizontal and angular shapes that we have in the X7. And now moving on to the iX. This to me feels like BMW are a little bit lost in their design and they don't know what direction they want to go in. I am not a fan of this design at all. I think it lacks any sort of automotive emotional design in the lines and the proportions are just all over the place in this thing. And so are the graphics. The, the front end looks way too narrow. You can see that it kind of sticks in to the opening in the lower part of the of the front end. These grills kind of hanging down here and intruding in this surface. And then we have a new version of this triangular side intake or whatever this is, where everything just clashes with everything. So every single graphic feature in the front end of the iX clashes with every other front end graphics. It's, uh, it's kind of a mess to me. I, I don't know why BMW went in this direction. I think they're trying to reinvent themselves maybe and create something brand new. And they're totally, you know, free to do that. But at the same time, don't lose the automotive design history of your brand the past 100 years just to reinvent yourself and create something new. We still need it to look like a BMW and this doesn't look like a BMW at all, not in the graphics and not in the proportions either. I've seen these out in the real life and I thought maybe it was gonna look better when I saw it out on the streets, but unfortunately it still uh, did not look great at all. And then we have the concept. So this is the XM concept. This is actually going into production. It has some uh, very product design styling, but I still think this looks way better than the iX up there. When they, here you can see that we have the headlights being part of the bumper here as well. We have these daytime running lights up top in this section and we have a big massive illuminated grill here which I think it doesn't look bad. Some people think that this grill looks too big on the XM and maybe it does. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to wait until I see this in real life. But there are companies that make grills that are a lot bigger than what this is right here. I think it's just because we're used to seeing 
the BMW grills being a certain size for such a long time. So when they start to increase the size, it's just gonna look a little weird. But I think this is one of the design graphic features that, that, that's gonna grow on us over time as BMW comes out with more models with this massive grill. You can see that the line flow in this is, is not great. That's what I mean when, when I say it looks like a product design instead of a car design. A car design is supposed to have a lot of emotion in it, fluid, long, beautiful lines. And that's what BMW has done up until, I guess, now. And the rear end, not a huge fan of how this looks. It has too many angles that don't connect with anything. And this is an homage to the M1. We're having these BMW logos up here. You can see in the glass right here. And this taillight, same thing as it has the same kind of vibe as the new X3 taillights. It lacks any sort of dynamic flow to it. It's just one strip of LED that kind of goes uh, in, 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 in a weird way across the, the tail and doesn't have connection to anything else. And then we have these quad tailpipes. Not sure if this vertical layout is going to go into production, but overall, I think the, uh, the XM is, it, it, it's, a, it's an interesting design study from BMW. I think they can work on this to product designy and lacks all sort of emotion that I want to see from BMW. So summing this up, BMW right now, as I said, I think they're starting to reinvent themselves. And I, th I don't think they know themselves exactly what direction they want to go in because they're dropping some models like the X1, for example, which looks pretty traditional when it comes to a BMW, but they're also dropping models like the iX and the XM down here, which looks completely different from anything we've seen from BMW before. So it's gonna be an interesting future to follow along here and see what direction BMW is actually going to take. Thank <laughs> you.